Heil. Uh, it does seem that everybody's pretty hot and uh, there's no doubt I am. In fact, the coolest room in, uh, in the house is probably where I am right now. Although I have got a, a light on me here, but it's, uh, but it's nice and cool, so I can't grumble about that. I hope all are doing well. Um, and uh, it's Friday, it's another week gone. Wow, number 27. Uh, if, you can, if, you, if you know your three times table, you'll know that's nine weeks we've been going, so that's good. Um, so what are we doing today? We've got the usual things. We've got, we're going to talk a bit more about suit contracts. Um, some quizzes, of course. To, I'll mention the teams again. We're going to be playing teams again tonight. Uh, I've got the teams made up, so I'm playing with Brian. And my teammates will be John and Becky. And then we've got Fran and Leslie and Pete and Tom. So a nice lineup. Uh, I threw out the team that we played against last week because they were too good. But I will invite them back for a challenge match uh, later on. Don't worry, I'll, I'll, I'll do my revision, you know, and, and, uh, and beat them up next time. Also, I'm, I've got uh, a, a nice announcement to make later on, a bit of excitement. So I'll, uh, I'll uh, bring that to you after the seminar and everything. So uh, with that, uh, I think uh, we should get going. So let's have a look. Um, we usually start with our quiz. So this is the quiz that you saw on Wednesday. It was one diamond from your right hand opponent, one diamond from your right hand opponent, and it's your bid. One diamond from your right hand opponent, and it's your bid. Um, you are vulnerable against not, but you know, that's not necessarily relevant on this question, but that's your thing. Um, wow, new hair. Uh, yep, that, uh, Helen's responsible for it. So uh, uh, there's a big, a lot of talk at the moment, of course, it, uh, from various um, hairdressers they're going to try and open early. I think they'll have a, a mad rush on them. That's not to say I, you know, I dispute my, my wife's hairdressing abilities, but I might go to the hairdressers, we'll see. <laughs> Not, not straight away, because that would be obvious, wouldn't it? OK, let's go. <laughs> Enough of that. Let's go to the PowerPoint. All right. So, <clears throat> we are talking suit contracts still. And uh, we were talking about drawing trumps last time, and we decided not to do it a few times because um, we were roughing. So we, we, I gave you three main reasons for not drawing trumps, OK? And the three main reasons were roughing, by far the most common, by far the most common. OK, that's going to come up uh, probably of the number of times you don't draw trumps, I would say that's probably 80% of the time. The other two are much more obscure. OK, but the other two are what we're looking today. And then we'll look at one last idea to finish us off. Um, so fast losers. Uh, really that's relating to when you do not have complete control of the trump suit. You'll notice that sometimes in certain examples I'll give you the ace, king, queen, jack, ten, nine of trumps to make sure that you, you know, that you, you're in complete control. But if you're missing the ace or you have to take a finesse, well then of course there's a chance of losing the lead. And if you lose the lead your opponents might do damage to you. And that's what I mean by fast losers. If, they, if they've got winners off the top, sometimes we have to do something about them before we draw trumps. And I'll give you a very simple example of that. OK, need to discard early. That's what I mean. So we'll see that nice and easy. And entries comes up a few more times than, than number two. And that is, do you need your trumps as entries? And this is a very common uh, situation where things can go wrong. OK, so dummy has got the ace king of trumps and an ace outside and you think, oh, this is easy. And suddenly you've drawn the trumps and the ace king of spades have disappeared and suddenly there's only one, le one entry left in dummy. So do bear in mind that, you know, when you're talking about that execution phase, we plan our play with attitude with an E on the end. The execution phase is making sure you've got the entries. OK, OK, getting from hand to hand. So let's uh, look at an example here. So I'm putting you in six spades and the lead is the king of diamonds. Uh, 
Okay, I'm back. And again, good to see some top tricks coming out there because I want you to do that every time, okay? Now this in a way is a very simple example, but it's important to exhibit it because what, by going through the worries sometimes when, when you're drawing jumps, etc., some will be more obvious, some won't be. Okay, so here we count our top tricks. Remember, I've put you in six spades. I'm sorry about that. We're going to be in a few slams on this one. So you're in six spades. You've got seven top tricks. And again, the reason why it is a very low number relative to the 12 you need is because you haven't got the ace of trumps, of course. I've given you the king, queen, jack, ten, nine, eight of trumps. So there is undoubtedly four tricks there. That makes 11. Where is the 12 coming from? Okay. Well, again, when you count your losers in the West Hand, which we will do, you will see where that might come from. So let's do that. It, hopefully, assuming trumps break normally, you will actually be able to rough in the East Hand. Let's just see that when we look at the losers. Okay. So uh, when I put the losers up, clearly we have the Ace of Spades. Remember, we're looking at the hand on your left now. You've got the Ace of Spades has to lose. There are two diamonds in your hand and one club loser. So we have to make a plan to get rid of them. Okay. Now, I'm hoping everybody's happy. You have the Ace, King, Queen of Hearts. Okay. You've got the Ace, King, Queen of Hearts. So clearly you can discard two losers on that. The Ace of Hearts takes the three, but there'll be two losers to go. There'll be one more loser to get rid of. And hopefully that is the fourth club. Okay, so ace, king, queen, and then the fourth club will hopefully be able to be roughed. Now, because I've thought about that, I'm in a place to understand that if trumps did break horribly on this one, so if they broke four and zero, I would have to make sure I still had a plan to get rid of that last club. Okay, um, so we might mention that. But of course, the crucial element here is that the king of diamonds has been led and they've knocked out your ace of diamonds. Okay, so that's your plan, discarding diamonds and roughing the club, but the key is we have to discard the diamonds early. So they've knocked out our ace of diamonds. Clearly, if we play trumps here, which is our normal thing, if we play trumps here, okay, well then of course, the opponents will just take two diamond winners. Okay, so therefore what we need to do here is win the ace of diamonds, play the ace, king, queen of hearts off first. Okay. There's a slight risk, but of course, it, it's less of a risk than playing a spade because the, clearly they're going to take their winners. Okay, so here you play the ace, king, queen of hearts before trumps, throw away your diamonds, and then play trumps. On this hand, the trumps broke 3 1 or 2 2, so there wasn't a worry. If they did break 4 0, you'd play a couple of rounds of trumps and then you'd say to yourself, I've still got to get rid of that last club. So you'd play your ace, king, and queen of clubs. And if the clubs broke three and three, you'd be a happy chappy. If they broke four and two, you would be hoping that the player who had two started with no trumps at all. Okay. And because we were counting our losers there, remember not the losing trick count, your losers in terms of the playing of the hand, you identified the four of clubs as a loser. However, 80%, 85% of the time, probably 88% of the time, you won't get that bad break. So hence we tend to very often when we make a plan, we plan it normally. If we get someone discarding on the first round of a suit, okay, then you have to replan. And it's probably better to do that because you don't get bad breaks more than one in 10 times. I mean, I guess a few of you will say, what, what about on BBO? Surely they come up more often. They don't, they are just computed out hands, but computed out hands are going to allow bad breaks to come up more often. Okay, let's look at another hand. So that was just n delaying the drawing of trumps to discard important losers first. Have a look at this one. It's the Jack of Clubs lead. I've, I'm afraid to say it's a lovely Friday and I'm putting you in trumps. Okay, I'm putting you in a lot of trump contracts here. Okay, sorry, slam contracts. Have a look at this one. I'm back, water down the gullet. 
let's have a look. Counting losers. I'm happy with eight. I have to be honest. If I'm honest, I would count five winners for my spades. Okay, and that's what I was saying before. Generally, if I'm almost always going to make all of them, I tend to count them in my top tricks. It's a bit naughty, because in theory, if spades break five nil, I won't have that base plan. Okay, but I have to be honest, I would often count it as nine top tricks. And when I play my first trump, if someone discards, I think, okay, I need to think again here. Okay, and what I'm really sort of saying there is, look, a five nil break isn't going to come up enough for me to, to, to isolate it, if that makes sense. So it's, you know, don't get me wrong, I don't mind counting eight and saying I'm going to make a, nine, a ninth one straight away from spades. Okay, okay, so just to explain that clearly, precisely there are eight winners. You've got the ace, king, queen, jack of spades, the ace of diamonds and the ace, king, queen of clubs. That's eight, but I would tend to count nine because I would count the fifth spade because it almost always will make. Okay, bit, bit, bit lazy, but it's the tactic I use. You don't have to, you can count eight and out, but I want you to have a number. And this is a simple hand, surely. You've got nine top tricks, you've got three extra heart tricks, okay? And when you first look at the hand, you're gonna think this is easy, I'll just do it. And of course we will draw trumps. And when you were looking at the hand originally, you thought, well, there's plenty of entries to dummy, what's the problem? Of course, once dummy, once the trumps have gone, there's not so many entries to dummy. Can you see that? And so this is the, the classic thing. So when you are looking at a hand like this, what you've got to say to yourself is, I'm playing against competent defenders. Now that's not always gonna be the case, but unfortunately sometimes the defenders will not be as nice as they would, what you would like them to be. Because clearly, if they take the first round of hearts, that's brilliant news, I can just lead a heart. But if they take the second round of hearts, if all of my trumps have gone, how will I get to dummy? Okay, all right, so all we're doing here is that execution phase, making sure you can get to your long extra tricks from hearts. And often it'll be a long suit where you have to plan, okay? So we've got three losers, okay? A number of people pointed that, let's go through that. Again, I'm counting all of the spades as winners, okay? Obviously, if there's a five nil break, you're going down, okay? Um, I say that there is a tiny, tiny little chance, but we're not gonna go that, that would be, that would be a, a level five on, on Bridgemaster as, as Hyatt was mentioning there, okay? Um, so all I'm gonna look at is clearly the ace of hearts we've got to lose, we have a diamond loser, and a club loser, okay? And we're gonna to need to get rid of those. Now, clearly in our plan, okay, on the third and fourth round of hearts, we will be able to discard, and clearly we'll discard the three of diamonds and the two of clubs. So as long as we make our hearts, we are happy, okay? So we're gonna throw them on the heart. So let's just do it if we draw trumps and just make sure everybody understands where the problem is, okay? So if we draw trumps, so we win the ace of diamonds and draw, sorry, the ace of clubs and draw trumps. When we lead a heart now, the king gets ducked, okay? Then what do you do? You play another heart. The ace wins and you'll never get to dummy, okay? Your three of diamonds and two of clubs will probably lose. I suppose you might make the clubs if they break three, three, but essentially, um, you know, you're definitely gonna lose a diamond. So you are, it's crucial that you have an entry there. And don't forget, the opponents can see dummy. So I know I'm, the odd person might take the ace of hearts on level one here, yeah, sorry, on, on trick on the first heart, but most people will look at hearts and say, do you know, Declare is gonna try and make those and I'm gonna do my damnness to stop him. So they will duck at least once. If they duck twice, you might have a chance. Okay, so what I'm doing is planning to leave an entry in dummy and one person's already mentioned it there. We're gonna try and draw two trumps because we are taking a risk. The jack of clubs is led, I've got lots of clubs. It is possible that one of them is slightly short in clubs. So I'd prefer to draw as many trumps as I could, but leave one entry in dummy, okay? So leave one high trump. So let's say play the ace of spades and the queen of spades. I think I played the queen and then the ace, but either way. So you win the first trick. Um, 
play two rounds of trumps. Let's just quickly play those. Okay, and they both follow, which is good news. We sort of need a 3-2 a break here, and we get it. So everybody's followed there. Okay. And now you play hearts. So let's have a look. The king of hearts is led. And there is a risk involved. Now, the defenders have done well. They've ducked. We play another heart to the ace. Okay. And if one of them had a doubleton heart here, <coughs> maybe they'd lead another heart. And if North still had a trump, we would probably go down. But we've worked out it's a risk we've got to take. As it is, the Ace of Hearts wins. They lead a, a club back, which both follow to. Okay. And now we can cross to the Ace of Spades and make our Jack and Ten of Hearts. Okay. As pointed out, it's not the greatest slam. If they'd led a diamond, you would have gone down. Okay, because they, you, you would have had to lose a diamond and a heart. But the key here is, is you're dealing with the lead you've got. Okay, and of course you didn't bid the hand, so you may have been in four spades. But if you were playing in four spades, you'd probably want to go for that extra over trick or two. And so again, in four spades, I would tend to plan it this way. Unless I was playing teams. Okay, don't forget, teams is a different game. Okay, where you're not worried about your over tricks, but playing in six spades, you had no choice. Here, I can cross over to the ace of spades, which draws the last trump, sorry, which draws the last trump. And clearly the jack and ten of hearts allow me to discard my two losers, the three of diamonds and the two of clubs. So that is the idea of keeping entries, okay? So the three reasons for not drawing trumps, to be honest, if you only remember roughing, you'll probably remember 80% of the times you don't draw trumps, okay? The other two main ones are discarding urgently and entries relatively common because if, if you happen to have high cards in the trump suit they can be very valuable okay here i'm just establishing establishing a suit but you might need to take finesses you might need the ace of spades to take a finesse king of spades so you need to make that plan okay here we go have a look at this last hand oh i'll just show you the lead do that Hi there, welcome back. Okay, four spades here. So I've, I've given you a little easier task on this one. Although it's a slightly trickier hand than, than the other ones we've looked at. Okay, so this is just gonna finish our, finish our look at uh, declare a play in, 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 in Trump contracts from a basic point of view, I hope. And this time, of course, again, a very low number of top tricks. So often the case when you have wonderful spades. Sorry, when you don't have the ace of spades, but you don't have wonderful spades, you're missing the top trump. So let's just add up the top tricks. Five top tricks, ace of hearts, ace of diamonds, ace, king, queen of clubs. You're going to make four spades, aren't you? You're going to make four trumps easily enough. Okay. And uh, I think you're going to make an extra trick from hearts, whatever happens. If the heart finesse loses, you will still have an extra trick in hearts. Is everybody happy with that? Okay. Okay, just to say that again. You know, if the heart finesse loses, you'll still make an extra trick, so you'll be able to discard. However, let's look at the losers. Ooh, not so nice. You, a number of people said on the last hand, if they'd led a diamond, we'd go down. Well, unfortunately, they've led, they've led your weak suit on this one. So the king of diamonds is led. Now, I think everybody knows how to make the contract if the heart finesse works. In fact, I hope everybody's going to make 11 tricks. That's not really the problem, and those of you who've played Bridge Master before will know that on a hand like this, you would know the finesse isn't working. Okay, so what we've got to do here is try to make the contract if the finesse loses. So I'm hoping the idea here is if North has the King of Hearts, I think we should make 11 tricks. Okay, and if we wanted to, we could, to, with that in mind, we'd probably take our heart finesses straight away to try and discard diamonds but what i want you to do okay is make a plan if the finesse loses okay so have a little think about that so what can we do 
Well, of course, what we're going to do here is use a tactic that we use in no trumps, which of course is much less common, much less common in suit contracts, but it's the idea of ducking. Now, why is it less common in suit contracts? Very simple, okay, because if you duck too long, someone starts roughing, so that's not ideal. But what we're doing here is thinking, well, if the heart finesse works, I'm happy. If the heart finesse doesn't work, my worry is that whoever gets the lead, so South wins the King of Hearts, he'll be able to lead a diamond back. But imagine North had five diamonds, excuse me, and South had two. Well, by ducking a diamond, you could find that you cut South off. So what you're hoping is that South has the Ace of Spades and if he has that King of Hearts. Remember, if he doesn't have the King of Hearts, we're not worried because the finesse is going to work. Can you see the idea? Now, it's true the diamonds might break 6-1, but all we're doing here is trying to play for the most common chance. If the diamonds break 4-3, and three, I'm afraid we've got no hope. Don't forget, if you duck two diamonds, you've lost two diamonds, so that's no good to me at all. So what we're doing is ducking once and just giving us a little chance. So let's just put that into action and see what I mean. So we, we know we can discard a, heart, a diamond on the hearts, but the problem is if, if we lose a trick, they're going to make as many diamonds as they can. Okay. And this is the crucial thing whenever you're making a plan. So quite a lot of people made a good plan, okay? But they, what I want you to do is always plan for the worst. Well, not, not the complete worst, but, 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 but imagine things aren't so nice for you. So I don't want you to imagine five nil breaks, okay? But I want you to imagine the odd finesse not working because it's nice to be optimistic, okay? But uh, you've got to be a little bit careful. So you can hold up. So let's look at it. Let's look at the whole hand and see what happens if we hold up and if we don't. OK, so here's the full layout. Okay, You can see the diamonds are breaking 5-2. So if we win the first diamond, OK, I've taken the ace of diamonds away there. What I'm going to do now is take a heart finesse straight away. Remember, if I play spades, whoever has the ace of spades will just play diamonds anyway. OK, so I'm going to take the heart finesse and hope it works. Unfortunately, today, South wins the King of Hearts and has a diamond left, okay, to play to the Queen and Jack, okay? So therefore they make two diamond tricks, the King of Hearts and the Ace of Spades, and you just say, oh, it was a little bit unlucky, partner. It was a good, it was a good game, it was a 50-50 shot, and if they hadn't let a diamond, we'd have made, so it was a good game. And you're right, it is a good game, okay? However, what our plan here is to duck that first heart. So by ducking the first heart, this is where we get to. The ace of diamonds is one, and we again take the heart finesse. South wins the king. He hasn't got a diamond to play back. Can you see that? Okay, so he hasn't got a diamond to play back, and, uh, and we're happy. Now, of course, North could have the ace of spades as well, okay? And I suppose if, if South won and then managed to play a spade to the ace, they could still take it down. But there's nothing you can do if North has an entry. We saw this when we were ducking in no trumps. If the wrong person has the ace, there's nothing you can do. But here, the, the King of Hearts, well, if North had had it, he's not wrong because the finesse would have worked. And here South has it, the finesse doesn't work, but you've cut him off. Don't forget, almost never will you duck twice in a suit contract there, Brian, okay? So the, cl the clue here is, remember, if you lose two diamonds, you've gone down if the heart finesse. So very, very well. I, I, I can probably come up with an example that it might be a reason to duck twice. But again, it will probably be an example from a bridge master level three or four or five. It'll be a very obscure hand where you're actually discarding in one hand and ducking. So almost never will you duck twice in a suit contract. OK, because so often someone will be roughing the third round, okay? In no trumps, of course, we used a rule of seven. That is very different. You're cutting them off. There is no roughing involved. Here, it's a suit contract, okay? So we've ducked once, okay? And it can go wrong, okay? Believe me, if anybody in the list on my right who, have, who are, gets regular number fives on Bridgemaster right, 
I have no idea why you're here, because number fives are awesomely difficult, number threes are really difficult, number fours are crazily difficult, number twos are difficult, number ones, that will be a challenge, okay? But number fives, I used to have great fun with them, but I have a feeling I would struggle to get many of them right now. They are usually the most obscure squeezes that you have come across, so please stay clear of level fives on that version. Okay, well that's that hand <laughs> as I drift away. So North is cut off and he can't make his jack of diamonds and we have the chance of course then to discard it. We either lose the jack of hearts to the king but our ace queen will allow us to discard it. Okay, so that's lovely. Okay, so there's that one. So let's sum up what we've talked about in the in the last three days there. We've talked about making a plan with attitude and remember that's with the W. Okay, attitude with a W. Aim, top tricks, increase tricks, worry about the defence and execution. And what we said was worrying about the defence was I want you to try and count your losers. Again, do not forget that is nothing to do with the losing trick count. We look at our long trump hand and we then go through it and think, okay, where are my losers here and how can I get rid of them? Okay. Uh, just to say, someone there saying that I've shed an over trick. Uh, no. Um, I can still discard my club there. Um, no, uh, uh, yeah, no, no, I can only discard one diamond. So I'm losing the track there, but someone's saying you've shed an over trick. You can only discard one diamond on your hearts, don't forget. Okay, so you haven't shed an over trick, who's ever saying that. You will still make 11 tricks if you take the heart finesse and it works. Okay, so don't forget that. So you should be ducking at pairs as well. Please understand that. Play it through yourself if you can't quite get that. Okay, but as I say, you can, you're can. you only planning to discard one diamond on those hearts. So of course, ducking, you've still got a diamond loser. The main thing here, which I haven't really emphasized as much as I probably would in a live seminar, okay, is take your time at trick one. Because so many of these problems you'll get wrong if you've, if you've played at trick one or two already. So that's why I want you to make a plan and that's why when I see people do set hands and I'm with them live, if I catch them after 15 seconds playing from dummy, I ask them what their plan is. I'll ask them how many top tricks and as long as they've got a plan, I don't mind. And some people's minds go very, very fast. But most of the people I catch go, oh yes, sorry. Uh, you, know, well they, you know, they don't have to apologize to me. They're apologizing hopefully to themselves, but it's crucial that you make that plan then and there. Okay, let's look at that. Um, let's look at that quiz again. One diamond, okay, one diamond. I will be talking about Q+, don't forget, I will be showing you Q+, later on, someone asking about um, uh, doing a video on Q+, that will come out. It won't be a live one, but I, I will create that, in the, I hope, in the next three or four weeks. So let's look at this hand, one diamond. And anybody who's heard me talk about quizzes like this before knows what, knows what I'm going to say. I'm going to ask you what is the type of hand you have? And hopefully the answer you would come up with, brilliant, Brian's already said it without the question, unless he was lightning fast, you have a weak no trump. And the crucial word there is weak. The crucial word there is weak. Okay, so 12 to 14 points, the weakest types of hand, you don't have to bid. It doesn't mean you're never going to bid again, but you don't have to bid. Okay, and double is just generally going to get you into trouble. Yes, sometimes it will work, your partner will bid spades and happy, you're happy as Lowry. Okay, the problem is, often he'll bid hearts, now what do you do? Okay, and bear in mind that if you double and then bid no trumps, you are showing 19 or more points. Okay, so bear that in mind. Don't think you can double and if partner bids hearts, bid no trumps. Okay, because remember, if you double and your partner bids one heart, then one no trump has got to be strong because he hasn't shown any points. Here's his hand. If you did choose to double, he would have responded two hearts. Okay, 10 points and five hearts, and you would have been a little bit stuffed. Remember, as I say, two no trumps would be a forcing bid in the auction. But the key thing is, don't forget, it's not your last bid in the auction. In this auction, I would expect the auction to go one diamond, pass from you. I hope nobody was thinking of bidding a spade, I should say, I didn't, I didn't see anybody. Pass from you, pass from north, he hasn't got many points, and east would bid one heart. 
And the beautiful thing here is, is then of course, you can respond to that one no trump. Okay. All right, remember your partner might, might have borrowed a king. So you, I mean, you could, I suppose, dredge up two no trumps. It wouldn't be the worst bid, but you're gonna be able to bid no trumps now, knowing your partner's got some strength and you're gonna finish, I think, probably in one no trump. There's no need to get too excited with your hand. Okay, but the key is by passing, you've got rid of the weakness of your hand. You've got that across to your partner. I know a lot of you think, yes, but I've got an opening hand, etc. But it's not the nicest opening hand, is it? Okay, all right, seven and a half losers. Um, okay, remember that queen is by itself in spades. So I am going to pass with that hand. And as I say, you are gonna bid again later on. Okay, and that's the crucial thing here. Okay, remember, uh, so it would go one heart from your partner and then you'd bid. If your partner had 12 or 13 points, I'd expect him to be making a bid even if he was flatter than this. As someone pointed out, he should be borrowing a king. Came across that, I think, believe it or not, eight weeks ago. <laughs> okay, uh, let's, uh, that's enough on that. I'll show you the next quiz in a moment. Quick look at, this isn't an up-to-date one, but I, I've got a, <clears throat> we're up to about um, 21,500. So what's the, what's the news? What's the news? Well, it's, it's good and good news, really, but, uh, but I do, I, I've got to explain a few things. So there is some bad news in, but um, the good news, well, I'm making a new website. I'm making a new website and, uh, and I'm, I'm excited to launch it. And I've got to uh, put a few words of explanation, etc. Um, we've raised a wonderful amount from, for charity, 21,500. I'm going to add 4,500 to that for gift aid, so it's over 26,000. So that's wonderful. <sighs> what do I say next? Tricky. Um, Time for reality to bite. Um, both Mr. Bridge and I, um, and as a company and as a person, have been thinking, we've got nothing to do. Um, as a company, and, and, and as me, um, we are basically, we've got a year without business, uh, and a year without business is a year without money. And so um, I'm gonna be blunt here, I, uh, I've got a plan for the future, and so, I, you know, I'm creating a new website, really excited about it, and, and I'm going to talk to you about it over the next two or three weeks, and I'm hoping that you might join me there. It's going to be uh, about teaching, about chatting, about enjoying bridge. One of the most important things I'm hoping to include in it is going to be set hands, some playing of set hands. Those of you who've known me before, it's all well and good having seminars like this and all sorts, but for me, if you have the chance to play some hands, it's it's a wonderful thing, okay. So I'm 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 going to carry on with these, with these two or three with these seminars for two or three weeks, and I'll still have some live etc. But what I've got to do is I'm hoping that some of you will be able to support me, and what I'm really trying to do is simply bridge the gap to bridge. Yep, I came up with that one. Okay, bridge the gap back to bridge. Basically. I want, I love doing these, these live events. I really love doing these live events, okay? And, and I want to be back doing them. Uh, and the problem is, now I'm, don't get me wrong, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that we may, you know, that might be sooner rather than later, but <sighs> bringing us all back together, close together, the social distancing comes up so much that, you know, I think all of us have got in the back of our minds Next year, let's get there, you know, but you know, don't get me wrong, I'd love to be there earlier. And what I suddenly thought to me myself is when I do these live events, people come to the set hands and think, oh, we'll make those boards up later and whatever. And then I thought, you know, even with those live events, imagine I had the set hands there online for them. They could come to a live event, do it, and then they could go home and they'd be able to do it, play it, play it on their computer or play it on BBO or, you know, and you know, I'll explain how those kind of things are gonna work. So. You know, I'll, uh, I'll be over the next uh, two or three weeks, I'll be inviting you to come and join me as a founder member. Um, and then, uh, and I'll explain how that works. The, the bridge side, of course, is Bernard McGee Bridge. Um, and, uh, and you can see it, it's live, live now, but it's only got one page. And you can sign up for free just to show you're interested. And then, of course, it will be a subscription site where, um, where you'll be able to join me, etc. cetera. Um, so it's exciting. And as I say, what I'd love to have is your opinions, because I want to create a lovely community on, 
on on board. Uh, I've, I know I've got lots of you. And to, do you know my ambition for the founder members is this? And I was thinking about this: is in two years' time, in two years' time, I want to be with some of you on a cruise, having a little cocktail party for the founder members that supported me now, and just thinking, wow. Do you remember when? Okay, that's enough, thank you. All right, let's look at that quiz. Okay, this is the quiz that I'm gonna leave you with over the weekend. <clears throat> You've, um, you're opening the bidding again. Okay, you're opening the bidding, okay. And uh, there you go, you're opening the bidding, game all. Okay, game all, but you're opening the bidding. Okay, so have a look at that one. And, uh, and let's, let's remind ourselves, um, remind ourselves, oh, acelessness, I like it. First one to come up with that word this week, well done, Ruben. Okay, um, so playing teams tonight, do join us. Um, I'm hoping it's better than last week. Um, I've got a new bottle of rosé, it's brand new, so I might even give you the details of that. So don't forget it's on YouTube if you want to join us. If you do want to go online on BBO, it's a, I've got to remember my son's name now, <laughs> AJFM. Um, but of course you'll see me live if you watch me on YouTube, um, so you can, you, can, you can do that, okay? So thank you very much for your time. Um, enjoy the uh, enjoy this weather. It's unbelievable. And if anybody's got some extra time, would you come and water my garden? Because sometimes we're forgetting it. Okay. So let's have uh, let's have a great weekend and hopefully see you tonight if you want to join me for the teams. But if not, see you on Monday. Thank you very much. Thank you.